Brajaya Corp founder and advisor Tan Sri Vincent Tan and B Corp's unit Brajaya Land have obtained a restraining order against Kedah MB Datuk Sri Muhammad Sanusi Matno. This prevents Sanusi from making similar defamatory remarks relating to the Selangor Maritime Gateway project. Tan's counsel Chua Kia Lin confirmed with the Edge that the Shah Alam High Court allowed the ex parte injunction application earlier on Thursday. He also said that Sanusi's legal team had already been served a copy of the order from the court. The lawyer said the order is in effect until August 25th. Sanusi's legal team is allowed to submit a counter to the restraining order. The defamation suit cited by the Edge was filed at the Shah Alam High Court on August 8th via Tan's lawyers. Tan and B. Lan are seeking general damages, compensatory damages, aggravated damages and exemplary damages. Tan, through his lawyers, claimed that Sanusi's alleged defamatory comments imply that Tan is a corrupt person, corrupt businessman and a crony to Slango MB Datuk Sri Amiruddin Shari. Tan claimed that the comments implied that he had benefited directly or indirectly or received for free a piece of 600-acre land from the Selangor State Government. Tan further claimed that Sanusi's comments implied that he had given benefits to the Selangor State Government for the said land and as such caused the state to incur losses of $180 million. Tan's team said the defamatory statements are completely untrue, extreme, vile and specious spurious and have no basis whatsoever. Residential sales in Peninsula Malaysia nearly quadrupled to 11,273 units in the first half from 3,163 units in the first half of 2022, according to a survey by the Real Estate and Housing Developers Association Malaysia. Residential launches in Peninsula Malaysia also doubled to 14,392 units in the first half from 7,350 units in the first half of 2022. During the period under review, 35% percent of homes launched were sold. President Dato NK Tong said most of the new launches comprise apartments and condominiums at 7,183 units, followed by two to three-storey terrace houses and service residences. He elaborated that most sellable range from 300,001 to 500,000, with service residences and apartments condominiums taking the lead. Reda's survey of 148 property developers also found that 53% of respondents reported having unsold completely residential units as at end June, with 47% of these completed up to 12 months ago, while 31% were beyond 36 months. According to Tong, and financing loan rejection, unreleased Bumiputra lots and high price were cited as the top three reasons for unsold completed units. He suggested that banking institutions could consider implementing cross-subsidies to help home buyers own affordable homes. Nonetheless, about 53% of respondents are planning to launch their projects in the second half, with three quarters of them expecting to achieve sales of up to 50% six months after the launch. Meanwhile, most respondents had a neutral view of the business and property industry outlook for the coming year, with increased optimism for the first half of 2024. According to Tong, while the increase in the number of launches and sales is a positive sign that the property market is slowly returning to normalcy, true recovery is still out of reach as developers struggle with cost-related challenges. SP Satya's share price closed at 85.5 cent on Thursday, its highest in about 15 months, despite the real estate developer's announcement a day earlier of a 46% drop in its net profit for the second quarter of FY 2023. The last time the counter closed above that was in May last year, when it closed at 91.3 cent. At 85.5 cent, SP Satya's share price gained 8.23% or 6.5 cent from Wednesday's closing price at 79 cent, giving the group a market capitalization of about 3.47 billion ringgit. SP Satya was the fifth most actively traded stock in Bursa, Malaysia, with a total trading volume of 79.57 million. According to Bloomberg, seven research firms had target prices ranging from 68 cent to 1 ringgit 20 for SP Satya. Four houses had a buy or outperform call on the stock, followed by two hold and one underperform. In a note, TA Securities, which has a TP of 1 ringgit 5 cent, believes that management's FY 2023 sales target of 4.2 billion billion is achievable, considering that year-to-date property sales of 2.05 billion had made up 49% of the target, with 498 million in pending bookings. Hong Leong IB Research expects SP Satya's finance costs to stabilise with the interest rate hikes likely over, as the group continues its efforts to pare down debt. HLIB Research has a hold on the developer, but upped its target price from 53 cent to 77 cent.
Mangum saw its net profit for the second quarter jump 65% year on year to 43.64 million, mainly contributed by improvements at the group's gaming division. Quarterly revenue grew 11.4% year on year to 537.1 million from 482.1 million previously. It declared a second interim dividend of 2 cent per share. Despite a drop in the number of draws to 40 from 42, Magnum said that there was an improvement in net sales per draw, especially the 4D jackpot game where there was a strong jackpot run during the current quarter. For the first half, net profit improved by 38% year on year to 59.4 million from 43.1 million previously, as revenue increased 10% to 1.08 billion ringgit. On prospects, the group is cautiously optimistic on its gaming business performance for the second half, with the hope that it will remain promising following the continued growth trend of all its products in the past six months, notably the 4D Jackpot and Magnum Life Games. Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission Chief Commissioner Tan Sri Azambaki told XPM Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin's son-in-law, Datuk Sri Muhammad Adlan Burhan, and a company director being sought to assist in its investigation to just return to Malaysia and stop making excuses, Benama reports. The media earlier reported that the MACC is seeking Adlan and Mansur Sat, a lawyer, director and shareholder of NERS, to assist in an investigation into alleged corrupt practices related to the registration, acquisition and storage of biometric data of foreign workers at a ministry. Baki said that he is firm on his stance and that the two individuals should just come back and face any investigation. On August 9th, Adlan, through his lawyer, said he will definitely return to Malaysia as soon as possible to answer all questions and assist the MACC with any investigation as long as elements of threats and persecution against him are eliminated. Mansour also similarly denied that he is on the run from the authorities, adding that he left the country lawfully. In a statement Statement Mansour said that the MACC's press release on August 7th seeking information about his whereabouts had painted him in a wrong light and revealed that the commission allegedly knows his whereabouts as he had made this known to one of the investigating officers. Both Alan and Mansour also have an Interpol red notice issued against them. <laughs> 